Live from the Hustle's Corner, New York City, with our uh, distinguished co-host Jeanette Davis. Say hello. Hello, hello, everyone. <laughs> and with our distinguished guest, Chef Lily, who has hey, everyone a, <laughs> <laughs> she has written a really great book, "Sis, You Are the Cake," and we're talking about her, her life, her book and how it's, and from her humble beginnings, what led up to her success today. So we're gonna start it right off, uh, Chef Lili, and we'd like you to share with us your humble beginnings, where you were born, where you grew up, the challenges that you faced when you were younger, and then we're gonna go into some of the other things like, you know, what you've been through with drugs, mm -hmm. and, but we'd like to give you to, uh, the, the floor to let you share your experience. Okay, so I grew up in Pensacola, Florida, which is a small town in Florida. Um, it really doesn't have any type of, Pensacola is so small, it was, it's really no opportunities in Pensacola. So I soon left once I became an adult, I left and I moved to Atlanta, Georgia. And that's where I eventually would go to culinary school and lots of other things happened. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I went to culinary school, went to Le Cordon Bleu, and I would eventually end up in Hershey. I've been to a few other places just because I'm a chef. And so, yeah. All right. Now, you um, didn't you say that you had a stint in California? Were you yeah, in California? so that's actually where, so I was in California, I stayed there for about two years, and so now I'm out here in Vegas is where I'm residing now. Mm. Okay. okay. So you went from Pensacola to Atlanta, to California, to, to Las Vegas? Yes, okay. I've been all over. I was in Hershey first, because that's where I went to do like my culinary training, that was the hands-on part. And right. so then I came back to Atlanta, stayed there for a little while longer. And then I just decided that, you know, I would move out to California. You know, it's, of course, so Hollywood. And so I learned <laughs> so many things just from that move alone. And it was a lot of business things that I learned along that journey. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I, when you were younger, what was the childhood life? growing up with you, your family, your parents, what was it like during that, if I may ask? Sure. So when I grew up, I was raised by my dad, who was a single parent. My mother, she was also, um, she was on drugs as well. And uh -huh. so she just wasn't able to take care of me and my sister. And so my dad, he stepped in. He's always been a part of our lives. And so he just decided to raise us as a single father. Ah, that's yeah. a switch because it's usually the other way around. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Right, right. Yeah. And so that's why my daddy, oh my gosh, I, I love mm. my daddy to death. He's not here mm -hmm. anymore, but Aww. he was someone, yeah, he was someone who really just played a tremendous role in my upbringing and he did the best that he could, sometimes working three jobs. So, he yes, he did the whole single parent role. Oh, wow. <laughs> and he and he did an excellent job raising you because you're what a very you well independent woman. Yes. Thank you. And yes. I was I wanted, brothers, finally. <laughs> <laughs> it was important for me to highlight that part in my book because mm -hmm. yes, you're right. It actually is usually the other way around. Yeah. And so growing up, it was really taboo, like for people seeing a man raising daughters because it's usually you know the mom doing the raising and so mm -hmm. um that was definitely you know an experience in its own because of course my dad he was a he's a dad he's a man so mm -hmm. I commend him he did such a wonderful job but it was just little things like you know not having you know a woman presence at time you know like certain things like you know, I'll go ahead. I talked about it in the book, but it was just one day I had 
started my administration. I was in, I think I was in fifth grade, but um, just having to come home and talk to my dad about certain stuff like that was a little awkward, but I'm so grateful, <laughs> like I said, that I had him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so grateful that I had him because he he didn't make it a big deal. He just went out. He was always about just going and making it happen. So what mm. the woman would normally do, he made the sacrifice for you. Mm-hmm. He made that, I, got, I got right sacrifice. there. I, I got I, I have to give him kudos right there. Yes. Mm. You need a sacrifice. lot more men like him. <laughs> absolutely absolutely i'm so lucky that you yeah. know i had my dad yes, because yes. even sometimes like if it is a dad around you know and the mom is maybe experiencing problems you know the child still doesn't end up with the dad they might end up with just another family member you know yes, that's mm-hmm. true. he, he mm-hmm. cares so much about me and my sister so i was very lucky those parent children relationships is so very important. It's so, I, it's I it agree. so yes. important. I can't emphasize that enough. Now, as far as your mother is concerned, do you stay in contact? Do you try to communicate with her? Have you made any attempts? Actually, she- yes. Actually, yes. She is, a, um, she's very well a part of my life now. She's uh-huh. always been a part of my life. Because see, the great thing about my dad, he was always just very open and honest with me and my sister. So it wasn't like we didn't know her situation. Like my dad, he wasn't the type of sugarcoat things. Like he would explain it to us. And so we got things at a very young age. And so she would come around even when we were little girls and you know growing up because my dad he never kept her away from us he just uh, okay yeah. okay he uh, never, okay yeah and he didn't bad mouth her or nothing like that my really? dad just, yeah he didn't do that he was a very respectful type of guy you know and so he did like i said allowed us to know what was going on the situation so we weren't in the dark however he did allow us to have a relationship with her now, see, I got to stop you right there. <laughs> I have got to stop you right there. <laughs> How many sisters out there will not allow their fathers to have that type of relationship with their children on a breakup or a situation that, you know, that sours? And this one, in spite of the case that your mother was addicted to drugs. Mm-hmm. Would you say that's a bit of a catch-22 there? Yeah, I actually would. And, you know, um, that's something that I've learned about as well, just from watching my dad and how he dealt with my mom. Uh Um, Sometimes people, they make the choices that they make in life. However, that still, you don't want to keep a child from their parent, especially if it's a parent Mm -hmm. who wants to be a part of the child's life. Now, sometimes the parent you know, they, they have some, some situations that they're going mm-hmm. through, you know, mm-hmm. but he showed me that it was very important, you know, to make sure the child had that kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. And, and how uh, your mother is with your daughters? Uh, they have a good she, relationship? Yeah, she's a really great grandmother, actually. Okay. So it's so funny, like she wasn't available to really raise me and my sister because of her issues, but she actually it's like life comes full circle so now you know here I am a mom Mm -hmm. and I'm a single parent and so she would help out so much with that like she's she keeps her grandkids she makes meals it's like she's being mom to them too (laughs) yeah it's like she missing out yeah Uh, when she she had missed out with you and your sister yeah making making it up She's Those making up a lost round. Yeah, she's making up a lost time. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. they love their grandma and you know everything is good now with that aspect there. And so I don't mm-hmm. ever um of course I'm not I don't bad mouth my mom or make her feel bad. But it was important while I was writing this book that because it was kind of like for me to heal as well, because uh, with mm-hmm. her being absent from my life, um, that kind of I guess I felt a sense of abandonment and that was something that I had to come to terms with and writing the book was so therapeutic because I was able to do that and then I was able to face some 
things that I felt, you know, about that mm-hmm. situation that I had never talked about before. I was able to face that and actually just, you know, it's important for us to let people know, well, I didn't actually like that or, you know, that mm-hmm. affected me, that bothered me in this type of way. Mm-hmm. And they may not, you know, apologize, which she has apologized, you know, but um, sometimes you may not ever, you know, fix that relationship with the person, but it's just still important, in my opinion, for you to, you know, get that off of your chest. Yeah, it's like more forgiveness and, um, mm-hmm. you know, move on. And then um, your book is very good. I love your book. It's oh, very encouragement you. for women, especially single women. It, it talks about a lot of mm-hmm. encouragement. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, I, and I'm glad that you follow your guide. Mm-hmm. Uh, to get with the UN now. I wrote that book also because it just, I wanted to highlight, yeah, there's some things in the book, like I talk about my drug usage and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but um, I wanted to show people that, yes, everyone goes through things. Even mm-hmm. my mother, everyone, you know, there's no handbook on parenting and, you know, so I don't try to hold things against her because of, you know, certain things that she's been through. But yeah, um, we all go through things, but we can learn from those things. The mm-hmm. pain we go through turns into our purpose. Okay. On the subject of forgiveness, mm-hmm. I got to ask you this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What about the father of your children? Well, the father of my, so I was married when I turned 18. I got married at a young age. And so that relationship lasted roughly about four years. And then that relationship ended. And so then I entered another relationship. And so then um, I also shared kids with that guy as well. That was the one who you know, it, the drugs was going on. Now, prior oh. to me getting with him, I had, and I mentioned that in the book, I was with the guy who, he was the one who first introduced me to the, the drugs, mm. which was cocaine, by the way. Okay. Um, and I, I'm not really into peer pressure, and I don't know why I did what I did <laughs> back then, you know, because <laughs> usually I'm like, no, I'm not doing that. That's just that, you know, but I don't know. I just gave in and I I started doing that. It was supposed to be like, it was started off recreationally. It was like a fun thing at first. And then before you know it, it was just a problem. (laughs) And Mm. so then I, I, that relationship ended and that's when I met my, the father of my kids, the last guy. And he was already he was doing cocaine as well and so what ended up happening we began to kind of feed off of that type of energy you know so because he was on it and I was on it it was almost kind of in a crazy way this he was like my best friend like because we were doing the same things and that was just something that we got into doing but it spiraled out of control really really bad and so I ended up making choices poor choices Mm -hmm. at that you know because I Mm -hmm. was listening to him and and I ended up making a a bad choice and that's how we ended up getting arrested and then I went to prison and so I ended up I had never been in prison before so Mm. That was actually a crazy ordeal (laughs) I mean how long how long you was in prison I only had to do six months because I okay. wasn't, uh, I yeah, wasn't I like this you, uh, hard and criminal. <laughs> yeah, you, you, okay. you, I read that you did a year, but I knew yeah, I did a year because total. You, no, no criminal background, you wouldn't have completed that year. I knew that for a fact. Uh-huh, so, uh-huh. In actuality, I, had, I don't think you were in jail. You were probably in a detention center. Am I correct? Yeah, no, because in the state of Georgia. <laughs> Oh, oh okay. <laughs> they, okay. they send you to prison, actually. Oh, so, okay. And a lot of people were like, oh, my God, you know, they sent you to prison. That's not even a long time you were given. Why would they? And, but that was what happened. So, yeah, I, I, I experienced that. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that six months woke you up. 
it woke me up because, um, you know, at the same time, I was a mother going mm-hmm. through all of this. And so I was away from my kids in a negative way. I didn't like that. And my mom was also in and out of jail and prison as I was growing up. And so what happened, I began to see a pattern that was happening. And I did not like that. I didn't want that for my kids because I knew how I felt growing up as a mother, not not as a mother, growing up as a child and not having my mom in my life. And so, yeah, I wanted to make a change because of that. Mm -hmm. But the prison thing actually happened because I had, um, I I like to think this is why it happened. So I actually didn't want to do drugs anymore. And so I remember praying. I said, Lord, could you please, I, I need help. I don't know how to get this monkey off my back, but I need some help. Whatever you need to do, because you, I need help. And so well, that's the usually Lord, the way it goes. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Oh, although I was, <laughs> not, I didn't want to go to jail and prison. I didn't, I didn't want that. But you know that actually now I look back at that time, and that was what I needed for me to grow and change and. I hate that that had to happen for me to do that, but Mm -hmm. that's what it took. That one simple mistake of change, Mm -hmm. everything, everything. It's it's, it's amazing what the Lord will allow you to get into so he can Mm -hmm. finally get your attention and your focus. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I was wide awake then. I'm I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and, and you don't mind if I ask you in the time you was in prison, uh, what was your children? Were they uh, was in foster home or relatives? No, so I have such a, a beautiful support system. So okay. again, we was talking about mom earlier and her that full circleness. So she then came back around, you know, to mm-hmm. help out with the kids in that situation. Okay. So she was there and my sister, my sister is like my backbone. It's, mm. We're actually, we're siblings, that's my sister, but she's been there with me and my kids every step of the way from the first time I ever had any kids. She's always been there. So they know her, it's like their mom too. Almost like as okay. <laughs> so would you attribute this support system to the one person that I would say is the real connector in all of this, the father, your father. I actually would. My dad, he actually raised us, he raised me and my sister to be very close with one another. So it was always me, my dad, and my sister. So we did everything together. We He would take us to movies, and he always made time to spend with me and my sister. But he, he always told me and her we always have to have each other's back Mm -hmm. and so I guess that's why you know we're such a strong it's very and a lot of people don't even get our relationship because I don't think you know and I think we all can agree not a lot of families really are close close I guess you can say Mm -hmm. they are to an extent but my sister she go in for me (laughs) (laughs) well that's good that's good Mm -hmm. I wish I could I wish I could say that about my sibling. <laughs> yeah, my sister, she is, she's definitely just, she's an angel. See, I, I, I asked you these questions because of they underlie critical issues within the Black community. And Absolutely. one of those issues that we have lost, completely lost sight of, it really happened it, 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 we really lost sight of that on, with the advent of the crack epidemic because I was there during the crack, crack epidemic. I came up here yeah. in <laughs> just when the crack epidemic was getting off. Mm-hmm. It completely destroyed the Black family. I agree. It wiped mm-hmm. it out. And I now... <laughs> <laughs> and, and today, so you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And Absolutely. Today you have people today, especially, you know, the black family today, uh-huh. it's, it's, it's like we're struggling, we're, we're clawing, we're fighting to get back to that family element, but it's just not like it was before. 
Mm-hmm. Which is what, uh, which is, which is brings me to the next question that I want to ask you. <laughs> the question in your book on self love, loving yourself. Mm-hmm. What I see, I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. What you've written in the book, to a fault. Mm-hmm. To a fault. Here's what I'm talking about. When you say love yourself, what I see in you is true self love because of what you've been. Not only because of what you've been through, but but what you overcame, how you overcame it. That Mm -hmm. is self-love. That's self-love. Absolutely. Absolutely. What I see out there today is not Mm self-love. You don't don't believe me, just go take a look at love and hip-hop. That show is a circus. (laughs) It's a circus. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It is. I agree. Oh, my God. God, I mean, when I look at green hair, blonde hair, blue hair, red hair, 10-inch nails, 12-inch <laughs> pumps, half-naked outfits, that is not self <laughs> That's not self-respect. That's none, of, that's none of the above. But yet, I, this is what people identify self-love being. They yeah. think, you know, it really is, it, they've taken it and, 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 and morphed it or, or and, and 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 turned it into this a uh, 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 perverted version, which really amounts to nothing more than narcissism. That they're mm. very narcissistic. This is a very narcissistic society. This is a society, and the problem is that same mentality permeates even our families now. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, it was one of the reasons why I myself I had to stop going to our family reunions. The family unions today is nothing like it was when I was growing up. Yeah. <laughs> the family unions today no, is, it's oh not. my God. It's, you know, if you, you know, if you aren't as successful as one of the other members in the family, you get thrown under the bus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know That's I mean? true. That's true. You get thrown under the bus. If, you, if, if they can get, if certain family members can get something out of you, if they can get money out of you, if they can get something out of you, Oh, you get phone calls from them all on. Hey, how you doing, Lily? I know. How you doing, Lily? <laughs> and everybody ain't able. Mm-hmm. That's what they like say. <laughs> but yeah. as soon as that, as soon as whatever it is they get from you stops coming, you won't even get a Facebook like from them. Mm-mm. That's <laughs> true. And and That's the, true. and you won't and get a Facebook like. And one thing I look at self love is about independent. Mm-hmm. Be more you. Depend, mm-hmm. you know, pay attention to, of yourself. That's what I like about your book because, mm-hmm. like I said, you encourage people, especially single women mm-hmm. and single mothers, to curse them to get out there. Do do what you got to do. Do believe us for uh, what you believe in, what you love to do, what's your passion. Mm-hmm. So that's why the way I see self love. And now. Yeah. Mm-hmm, and you know, setting boundaries for yourself too. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a part of self love. You know, not just settling for what life throws at you. You know, yeah. like that's why I wrote that book as well. You know, I wanted women to understand. You know, you don't have to settle for anything. Some women are staying dead in situations for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. And imagine what you could have done with yourself during that time you were with someone who didn't value you. Right. You could have been done anything. You know? <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and I agree with you 100% on that, honey. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's not even worth it. One of the things that you mentioned was your environment. You knew that in Florida, that environment wasn't conducive to your success. Oh, no, gosh. No. <laughs> <laughs> So you were willing to do what a lot of people are not willing to do. You mm-hmm. got up and relocated. You moved. Mm-hmm. You went, and, and you went from Florida to Atlanta to California to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is that sometimes in order for you to really get to where you want to be, for you to be able to prosper, you have to be willing to make those kinds of moves. You sometimes, do. It's sometimes going to take you to get them and say, hey, look, goodbye to all of this. Mm-hmm. It, it, it really does. And it takes saying goodbye to certain people. 
It does. And it really, yeah. it really it does. does. That's what I mean by focus. <laughs> and you eliminate everyone, anything, any place that is not conducive mm -hmm. to you being able to move forward. And you mm -hmm. show that beautifully in your book. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I, I was confused at was when you got into a relationship with a guy and you fell into drugs. Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that you had such a great father for a parent. So, I know, that is. It was, it was confusing. I'm like, her father's a great guy. I, I, I. So my guess is, would you say, would you attribute that more or less because of your mother? Yes, that's what I was getting at in the book. Um, and not, but so what was going on, just growing up, not having her in my life, you know, I missed her, you know, it would be, you know, the other girls growing up, you know, they had their moms and they were able to do those mom daughter type of things. And I didn't, I had a great, great father, don't get me wrong, but mm -hmm. my daddy wasn't, you know, he was a dad, you know, so he was like, Wanting us to sign up for boxing classes and <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, just I like guess. guy type of thing, a guy know? thing, yeah. And and I wanted to be a gymnast, you know. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so it was just you know those types of things, and not so not having her, I believe, left some type of void, and so then I would make these poor decisions when I was getting into these relationships. And a lot of it was, you know, they were, they were um, broken too. They were dealing with trauma as well. And so I believe that attracted me to them, you know, in some weird, strange way. This concludes this session of the Hustle's Corner in New York City. If you are a person that's incarcerated and you have books that you'd like to get out and you want to share your story, Come share your story on the Hustle's Corner New York City Tales from the Bid series. If you are a person who has been wrongfully convicted of a crime that you did not commit, and you want to share your story, come share your story on the Hustle's Corner New York City Victims of the System series. If you are a person who has been self-reformed, active in the community, came out of a past nefarious life to a more positive one, and you want to share your story, Come share your story on the Hustle's Corner New York City Legends of the Hood series. If you are a black business owner and you want to share your story of how you got your business off the ground and how you faced many challenges to succeed, come share your story on the Hustle's Corner New York City Black Business Movement series. If you are a musician or an artist or a vocalist or a rapper, hip hop artist, and you want to share your story about your career and how you have grown it into success, come share your story on the Hustle's Corner New York City On The Grind series. And if you are a woman who has been through traumatic times in her life only to overcome them, come share your story on the Hustle's Corner New York City Lipstick Stories series. And if you're enjoying the show, please help us grow. Show your love. Like, share, leave a comment, and most of all, subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Looking forward to seeing you again. This is Perry Elda from the Hustle's Corner of New York City. Peace.